Hi, my name is Jason Roberts. Today I'm going to be talking about the Moses Slypod Pro, which is a motorized monopod that can also be used as a slider in a jib. I'm also going to drop a bombshell on the reason some of you may not want to purchase this product at this point. So my goal for the day was to build the lightest slider rig possible for hiking. I ended up bringing along a very flimsy camera stand weighing in at just over 10 pounds. We are currently on our way to Cape Flattery, which is the northwest tip of the United States on the Macaw Reservation in uh, Nia Bay, Washington. Uh, right now the reservation is closed to the public because of COVID. It's been closed for over a year and a half now. So there are no tourists there right now, and more than likely we won't even see anybody, which creates the perfect environment for filming. Today I'm going to be talking about the Moses Slypod Pro, which is a monopod that can also be used as a slider in a jib. So first off, um, these weigh about five pounds. Uh, they advertise 3.2, but with the ball head and tripod base, it weighs about five. The head has a nice solid design. It will move and articulate in all directions and lock into place very firmly has an Arca Swiss plate. I've used a lot of Manfrotto plates in the past, but I'm beginning to like Arca Swiss mount a lot. We're gonna turn it on now. You just hold the button for three seconds, and it now will open up the tripod base. Uh, these open up pretty quickly, click into place. I do wish that they would lock though, because normally, you know, if you wanna secure a tripod or a C-stand, you throw weight on it. But the problem with this is that if you throw weight on it, it's not gonna do a whole lot to keep it from falling over. So at its lowest point, it sits about three feet high. It has 22 inches of travel. So it's just over five feet when it's fully extended. So I'm putting my 6K Pro on here with a 16 to 35, which is actually a pretty heavy camera. These are, with the battery on here, I think this weighs about six pounds. So if you have a Sony, Panasonic mirrorless, uh, you won't have any trouble at all with this moving it. So I'm gonna set this in the slowest speed. There's actually uh, seven speeds, I believe, um, that range from five seconds all the way to its slowest speed of 50 seconds. Okay, here we go, pushing record. This looks like it's gonna be an amazing shot here. Just finishing up the top. Came to a hard stop. Hopefully that will stabilize. Um, so my next shot, I wanna not only go vertical, I wanna have a slow push up at this angle, but that's gonna require using a tripod. So I want the camera to end about here probably start about right here. I'm actually gonna have to flip the, the base around here so that the head is on this side. So these little inserts go in here. These things fall out all the time. So I didn't bring a spare today. Hopefully I don't lose one. Okay, now I need to put the stabilizer bars on. So rigging these up, there's not a lot of room to work. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier to mount these um, stabilizer bars if there were screws on the side. Okay, so I got six pounds of camera here. Uh, I got my shot set up. This is not quite the slowest mode. I still can't believe I'm using a slider in a remote location like this. Um, I tried to do it before with a, a regular tripod and slider and it was a real workout, but I mean, I'm hardly even breaking a sweat today. So I found a great spot for a time lapse. I got a tattoosh island in the background, which is framed up nicely by the trees on both sides and then some foliage in the front. So I thought uh, some camera moving across the horizon would look great. So I'm going to set up this uh, time lapse. I got the bar level with the horizon and I'm happy with my shot. Momentarily, I'm going to have to switch to the 6K Pro while I load the application. Right now, I'm going to go into the Moza app. 
the, the Moza Master app and load it because um, he actually can't access the time lapse function unless he load the app. Well, here's the kicker. When you try to load the Moza app, when there's no cell phone service, this is what you get. It's a blank screen. So uh, there's no way that I can do a time lapse right now without any service. Um, I've tried this a few times and I just wanted to double check and make sure this was the case. So some, for some of you, this might be a deal breaker, not being able to use a time lapse mode in um, a remote area like this. Um, I still enjoy using it as a monopod though. And since I've got the shot set up, I think I'll maybe I'll get some slow motion shots and then uh, move on to a spot and hopefully find an area where I can get some cell phone service. Still nothing. Let's try it one more time. This is the Moza app. Click on it. We got nothing. So I'm done shooting for the day. At least I was able to get um, a little bit of cell phone service to get one time lapse in, but that's a problem that definitely needs to get fixed with this application is the ability to load it when uh, there's no cell phone service. I decided to get one more shot on the way out and I just want to do a simple uh, vertical movement with the camera um, for this closing scene here. Okay, so that's all for this week. Uh, thank you for joining me and sticking around for this long. I'm currently studying for my 107 license for my drone, uh, so I can use drone footage in my videos. And I'm also editing a Sasquatch encounter um, video. So um, stay tuned for that if uh, that's part of the, what interests you in my channel. This is not a sponsored video, but I get all my music from Artlist. So if you need music for your videos, check Artlist out. I'll see you next week.